I was wrong in doing what I did. No, 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 no. Are you listening? Sean here, and this came to me last night. I'm sitting there, and I'm working on the script for the Hulu project. And I realized I was stuck at a certain point. I think anybody who's ever written knows you get stuck at a certain point. It is so easy to get people in trouble, but it's difficult to get them out of trouble with a satisfying resolution for the audience. You've seen those movies. I mean, the movies nowadays, we have no heroes. You're perfect just the way you are. You don't have to change. These specific people are bad. This is bad. This concept is bad. They leave nothing up to the imagination or interpretation. Christopher Nolan may be the last living director. Him or Ari Aster. I don't I don't know. Ari Aster did Hereditary and Midsommar, two of my favorite films. But the point I'm getting to, I swear to God I'm getting to a point. I didn't mean to go off on a rant, but it is very important. Is that in those stories, you have a beginning, a middle, and you have an end. Usually a definitive end with some kind of hint for the future. Like you want to know what happens to them. So many times, like after Harry Potter, take the very end and you got the kids going to school. All you're thinking of is, that was, that was great. I'm talking about the books. That was great. But you're also thinking, man, I wonder, will his scar burn again? Will something happen? Will, does Voldemort have a secret kid? What are they going to do? I'm so excited. And then you came out with that play and we pretended pretended it didn't exist. But I will say, Lauren's story, and I believe this, it had sort of a beginning. And it had a huge middle. Like it's supposed to be, for us, it was a very upbeat and hilarious middle. For him, it was The Empire Strikes Back. And I'm sorry to compare him to Star Wars for any fans out there, but it was The Empire Strikes Back of his life. From humble beginnings... That young redneck from Cornville who dreamt of being something bigger. He dreamt of being a Nashville star. Now let's talk about his life if it was a movie. He dreamt of being a Nashville star. His life got low. He did something stupid. He did something even dumber when he went to Nashville and the Bowling Green thing happened. He went to prison. Now most redemption stories, a lot of ministers are former convicts that have turned their life around for real. For real, that is the power of faith and belief. Whether you're Christian or Muslim or Jewish, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying, these people took a stand and they said, this is not who I am. This is not who I'm going to be. Let me make a change. Let me be a force for good. And they did. We're still waiting for Lauren's third act. We're still in the second act. And it's been a long, long time. I can't even recall the date, 2007 or 2006. I don't remember what the year was. I'm having a brain fart right now. It's been a rough couple of days in terms of sleep. But we've been in the second act for so long, and it just keeps getting darker and darker and darker. And if this was a movie, he would have gotten out of prison. He would have tried to atone for what he did. And he would have become a member of some kind of band that was semi-successful, they were traveling on the road, they could be a tribute band, but you wonder, at the end of it, I wonder if something good will happen out of this for him. He doesn't have that. Think of living a life where you don't have a chance to have some kind of ending. Some of us refer to it as a life script. You don't write it yourself. Life writes it. But you get to fill in the dialogue and the details. You can choose where you live. Sometimes people will make random choices because they are tired of being at the mercy of fate and destiny, even though it could be fate and destiny that made it happen. But they'll just have a decent job, have a decent home life, circle of friends and say, I'm out. I can see where this is going. I'm just going to make a random change. And I'm going to go to the city that I like and the city I enjoy, or at least seeing pictures of and videos of. I'm going to move there because I'm young enough where I can do that. Obviously, if you're married and have kids, you'd have to make a decision with each other. At least I hope so when you're not a prisoner in your own home. Lauren refuses to write it. 
He refuses to change. Again, with the movies today, you don't need to, according to these movies, you don't need to go out and better yourself. You're perfect just the way you are, and people should just accept you. Even though you have massive flaws, you know shit about shit, pull up your pants, you don't know anything. Even though you have massive flaws, you don't have to change. You don't have to better yourself. You don't have to go through hardship. I don't know if Lauren thinks he's been through hardship. I don't, I don't know if he even understands what hardship is. He talks about his mom as if she was working in the dirt. They had dirt on their floors and their mom was mer- making $2 a week. Working 17 hours a day, 8 days a week. I don't know if he knows what hardship is. I think he deserves to know. I think he believes he deserves everything in the world and he should never have to work for it. So if you're coming into a second act off of that and you make those mistakes, when it's time for your third act to start, when it's time for you to make something of yourself, to better your life, it's not going to happen. The third act doesn't always play out how we want it to. It doesn't have to have a happy ending. It can have an ambiguous ending. Most of us will have an ending where you can look at it one or two ways. Yes, we led a good life, we had kids, but we were never rich and famous like we wanted to. We never got to produce that big budget movie. I never made it as a singer. You know, in my case, I never made it as a magician, like a big time on TV magician. However, as you get older, for those of you wondering, as you get older, you start to accept things. There are things that you can tolerate, things you can deal with, things that you can just look past and say, you know, if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. But you can't do that in the second act of your life. That's not a time when you should say, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I don't have to work for anything. That's the time where you should be working for it. Now, I probably have one more legitimate run in magic. Starting off, people keep telling me I need to do comedy magic, physical comedy. If I do this act, I will share it with you, I promise. I have no problem showing myself on screen. I I really don't care. It's just dealing with the video and getting in the right place and not having things in the background. Anyway, I'll, I'll post it. And then I'll post what my contest act is, which is more modern, cutting edge stuff, sleight of hand that's like right on the edge of new. So I'll share that with you guys. But I probably have one more run. I have one more run at making films. You'll discover as you get older, I think, that you don't have to be rich and famous to enjoy what you're doing. You can make those films. And as long as you have an audience of someone who appreciates it, of any kind, you'll feel okay. I think you'll feel all right. A lot of new streamers, I'm very happy for them. They're, they're really successful. And they took a chance. And they understand that this is probably the second act in their life. I don't know where I'm at in my life right now. I feel lost. I feel like I'm drifting. I don't have a girlfriend currently. I don't have a lot of friends. I keep close friends, people I can trust, people that have my back. I just feel like I'm drifting. And I think Lorne, he feels the same way, but he can't admit it to himself. And he will never admit it to himself. At least he won't verbalize it. Maybe he doesn't know how to express it. He just feels like, my life's stalled, you know? I'm kind of just waiting on the next big thing. That's why he will always be stuck on level one. That's why he's stuck in his second act. Everything in his life built up to that moment when Chris Hansen walked in in Bowling Green and everything that happened after that that was going to be something that he was going to have to deal with on his own something that he was going to have to figure out how am I going to deal with this how am I going to process it what am I going to do what can I do who can help me do it see Lauren probably focused on the who can help me do it I hope my mom has life insurance. I hope her life insurance is going to pay off all of my debts. I think Lauren with money is not going to last very long. Now, I will say this about Lauren Armstrong. I think he knows he's in the second act. I think he is well aware that he is in the second act and he doesn't know how to get out of it. Look at his taking a broad book. And his taking a broad book, 
I think the story pretty much centered around the fact that the guy was been through a whole lot. Think about it. He's been through a whole lot, a whole lot, not a whole lot. And bad. he did some bad things, but bad things happened to him. So those bad things were understandable by some. I think Lauren feels that's him. I think Lauren, I don't even know the guy's name. It was Adam, Steve, Johnson. I, I don't even remember. But let's just say Lauren, because that's what everybody else does. And Kayla. I think Lauren believes a bunch of bad stuff happened to him. He's he's misunderstood. His redemption is coming. Someone's going to realize it and say, Lauren, we, we understand all those bad things that happened to you. And we forgive you for what you did. We forgive you, Lauren. We're going to help you get out of here. Rather than go asking for help from people who specialize in this... He just sits back and waits for it. Now, taking abroad is terrible. Lauren's life is terrible. But they share similarities in their structure. I don't know what you would do, but if I was in the second act and I was Lauren, and I had what happened to him happen to me, I would want to get the hell away from Cornville. I would want to get away from everything that I knew. I would want to start over. I would want to get a job. I wouldn't want to, I would get off the internet. I wouldn't want people calling my work, even though it would have to be listed. I wouldn't tell people I was moving. I would do everything in my power to keep people from knowing what's going on in my life, especially if I was Lorne and I'm in the situation he is right now. The guy's desperate and he's needy and he's definitely clingy and you're going to become his singular point of obsession. So anything that you do, he should be involved with. And anything he does, you now own. What if he had been married like Walter Babst? Babst was a teacher, you know? Imagine Lorne going home and blaming his wife and telling her it's her fault. And yeah, well, Lorne going back to the school, refusing to leave the school. That's what Babst did. He went back to the school and they had to freaking call the school and they got him out of there but I don't think Lauren would believe he was going to get out of there I think he would be like this guy Bob Markwood Bob the magician who I think I've mentioned before he got out of prison for child molestation and what did he do he tried to fly under the radar and be a kid's magician because that's what he did before and he got busted by inside edition or hard copy I can't remember but I saw it and I looked at this guy and I'm like Wow, that is far from the well-groomed star of magic that I once knew. A guy who was an incredible teacher and performer. Strong, powerful Hollywood friends. He looked haggard and he just looked ancient. And I just thought to myself, that's what it does to you. But look at Lorne. He still looks pretty much the same mongoloid, just older, definitely aged, his body's in worse condition. I don't think it was as hard on him as it was other people because he thought he was the victim. And he fought and he fought and he probably still has hope that somehow some Nashville music scout's going to find him and he's going to get that third act he's always been dreaming of. If you were a director and you were being asked to make a movie about Lauren's life, especially with Oscar hopes in today's environment, you have to have a certain amount of gay people, a certain amount of lesbians, a certain amount of tri- whatever, different skin colors. You have to have a certain amount of everything to even be considered for an Oscar. Fuck the story. Fuck the script. If you're back in Viking times, there better be Asian, black, female, queen Vikings everywhere. Because that's the world we live in. So imagine you had to make Lauren's life in Cornville, Maine. You had to make this movie. How would you write the ending? How could you possibly make his life in today's environment into something that's consumable, something that's tolerable? You couldn't because he's a racist, homophobic douchebag. We know this. He's a rage monster, but there's no redemption for him. You would be stuck. The studio would be like, well, just make something up. Here's a true story. Friends of mine, the Zamperla Zopes, famous equestrian acrobatics family. They they filmed like 10, 20,000 hours of footage. 
And the only way they would air the show is if at the very end, Gino married Eva. Now, they hadn't planned on getting married, but they needed a happy ending, a definitive ending, because their brother Matt committed suicide. This is all public knowledge. And it was devastating to the family. And their mother, God, she's my second mom, Mafalda. She's just been through so much. They could have had one hell of a story there. But they needed some kind of happy ending. You couldn't do that with Lauren. Now, Lauren would be more of a TV show you would make. The only chance you would have of making a documentary is to focus on something positive that happened to someone in this community because of Lauren of how it helped somebody see that they could report that they were a victim or something. They would need something positive because you're not getting it out of Lauren's life. There are no positives in Lauren's life. I hope that one day, one day, something happens and he ends up, the peak of his happiness is having a job, going to that job, coming home, smoking cigarettes, watching whatever he watches, not answering the phone, goes to work, comes home, and just repeats that for as many days as he needs to until he dies. That, think about that. That is the peak that his life could reach and the peak that his life should reach. No access to anyone. He should never get on the internet, never answer the phone, just go to work, come home, go to work, come home, go to work, and just repeat that until the cows come home because in my opinion there will never be a third act for Lorne there will only be the very 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 long dark second act where people get into trouble and they have to have some kind of rescue or redemption but he'll never have it and it's a damn shame for his family that they can't speak about this guy because every time they speak about him they have to talk about what he did and what he's done to them in the past. So in my opinion, there will never be a third act for him. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Hang on, I can't even catch my breath. Hang on.